Let's go! Does Jackson Dart have a strong case as being the best quarterback in the SEC? Comment down below. And today, we're going to take a look at his final game of the season going up against a good Manny Diaz Penn State team. He completes this slant to Trey Harris in the slot. And on the very next play, you'll see right here, this time, this is an inbreaker going up against press coverage, single high safety. So, of course, Jackson Dart is going to like his number one receiver in this matchup. And you'll see Trey Harris has a route runner. When you watch him, you could tell that he and Malik Neighbors are really good friends, right? They're both from Lafayette, Louisiana, and their route running both at the slot and on the outside is just absolutely incredible. This is a, a potential RPO read right here for Jackson Dart. He pulls it because there is a heavy box and the safety is all the way back, so you got all this space to operate. And look at this route. It gets cut off here. Harris beats five again to the inside, but look at this ball placement. Yes, it is high. Jackson Dart had to throw off his back leg because of the pressure. The one thing about Ole Miss's offensive line and the Lane Kiffin offense is that this offensive line is okay at best. You see how badly they get beat to the inside here, but it doesn't matter because these plays happen so quick, and Jackson Dart has the ability to throw off his back leg. Now, he is kind of able to step into this throw, but you can see he's fading away uh, to make sure he doesn't get hit, and that ball... Even though it's not right on the money, that's really good considering there was pressure that just got right through there. All right, so sometimes offense comes down to how lucky you get calling the right play for the right defense. So at the snap, Penn State elects to uh, rotate into a single high coverage. This safety floats into the box to help defend the run, and this safety floats center field. And Ole Miss has a perfect play, a go route here and a go route here. Either one of these would have been open. And because Jackson Dart's first progression is to look to the right side, this slot receiver was open. So you got the absolute perfect play call right here, and Dart delivers it. He sees it immediately, and throws a really good ball. Yes, he had to stop and slow down for it. Still, you're able to get the big explosive play. All right, so I want you to remember this play, okay? First thing is the Penn State blitzer actually touched the helmet of the center before the snap. So this should have been offsides. So this kind of spooks the offensive line. Still, this is really poor protection. Um... You can't let interior guys run through unchecked. So the guard was letting the DT run through regardless. The guard needs to pick up this A-gap player, right? You never want to give up unblocked A-gap pressure. I don't know if the guard was expecting Quinshawn to pick this up, but I want you to remember this play a little bit later. The funny thing is, is if Jackson Dart would have just hit his underneath right here, I don't know if this is um, an option route where if – you see that the DB is checked so far back, you just stop your out and just stop. That could be the case here. But Dart had to let this go because well, it was getting creamed, right? And this ends up being a situation where Ole Miss has to settle for a field goal. It should have been offsides. Still, um, if it wasn't offsides, it should have been intentional grounding. So we move ahead, and Jackson wasn't the only Jackson during bowl season who made this mistake, okay? If you want to see the other Jackson, that is Arnold. That was one of our first bowl game film studies. That video is floating in the top right corner of your screen right now. It should be somewhere around here. And we've been doing film studies on all different types of quarterbacks. And once again, this Ole Miss offensive line, they get fooled on a stunt. So 11 wraps around here. Ole Miss doesn't pass it off properly. Still, as a quarterback on the second and 10, just hit this. That's all you got to do. You don't have to rip it deep every single time. And the second thing is, if you're going to pump right here, just eat this sack if this guy is right here. Because you see at the last second, he's trying to get this football off to Priest Horn. You never want to be fading midair trying to throw the football away because you have no leverage, okay? So you'll see that he kind of, um, right when he's getting ready to release this football, he kind of uh, jumps up into the air. You'll see, okay? See how he's on his toes? He has no leverage to be able to throw this football. He's getting absolutely destroyed here. And they eventually, I believe, call this an incompletion. You'll see it right here, okay? You see, he's thinking about ripping it, 
And then at the last second, he looks over here to Priest Horn. And once again, you're on your toes. You're jumping up in the air. You're wearing the Jordan 11 cleats. I like that. Uh, but still, you've got to be smarter as a QB right there. All right, so we move ahead to this fourth and two. Penn State was ready for it. You could see their sideline had seen Ole Miss versus Mississippi State convert uh, a, a third or a fourth down and short in this exact formation. This is a DT, P- Pagis. He pitches his football here, and it's uh, uh, the Statue of Liberty play. God, it's just such a nasty play and call right there by Lane Kiffin. Good job by 11 to get it over the outstretched arm of the unblocked defender. And this is a really good job by Jackson Dark picking up some extra yards. He almost fell over himself right there. And in this spot, as a QB, you just want to fall down. Don't let your legs get wrapped up. That's a good job. And look at Lane Kiffin. Ah, ah, ah. Got to love the emotion. Um, and we get to the second and nine. Now, man, I, I've just got to be real, man. Trey Harris is the real deal. And it's going to be hard to argue against him being the best wide receiver in the SEC going into next year. Okay? That is just a ridiculous catch right there. Really good ball placement uh, as well from Jackson Dart. All right, so this is one of the sexiest play calls you'll see from Lane Kiffin, okay? He is really good at getting something I like to call two-for-ones, all right? This play right here is run by everyone. It's just split zone tight end into the flats. LSU does it. Arkansas did it a lot with Luke Haas last year. And what I mean by two-for-ones is he does a really good job blocking two players with one receiver. So if Lane knows you're in man coverage, he knows this corner is going to run with the receiver because he's in man coverage with this receiver, especially one as good as Trey Harris. Lane knows this, so he asked Trey Harris to block a safety. And because he's going this way, this corner is going to run with the receiver thus making these this situation um, a situation where the receiver is blocking two players with just one person, right? And look at all this space to operate in the red zone where everything gets tight. Jackson Dart does a good job getting this out here. And you see it's just too late for this corner to react. And those two-for-ones create easy touchdown opportunities. All right, so I bet Ole Miss pretty heavily because I just don't think the Big Ten defensively is all that, right? They're good on defense because they play a lot of bad offenses. And you'll see Ole Miss had already matched the total yards per game that Penn State had given up. And look at this, okay? Um, You don't play a whole lot of quarterbacks as good. And look at this throw right here from Jackson Dart, okay? I've seen um, an evolution of go balls, right? You know, normally you would like to think it's better to lead the receiver down the field. But one could argue that this ball placement is actually perfect to the outside shoulder of the go ball receiver, right? Yes, it's going to be harder to catch the football and run after it. But you're also putting the ball in a spot where the DB really can't do anything about it. Kind of really amazing the ball. All right, so we get to this third and 12. And... Yeah, I mean, Dart plays this really well. Okay, nothing was open down the field. Throw it short. Give it to your tight end and see if he can pick up the first. Okay, give him a head of steam. And, you know, he's just short, but now you can go for it on fourth down. And we get to a little bit later in this drive. All right. And once again, it's Lane Kiffin's play design. This is something they've done throughout the entire year in the extended red zone Alabama did a really good job defending plays like this it's really really hard though uh, to get ready for it so you're running a go route with a fake pitch to the right side and the goal is to get it to this tight end leaking right here okay we just did a full film study on this in Bobby Petrino's system and Lane does it better than anyone okay tight end doesn't get picked up at all um DB right here kind of gets lost. And once again, the protection wasn't really all that great. It's the fake uh, to the the outside with the pitch. And then, of course, all the play action that you see throughout the course of the game gets you these wide open walk-in touchdowns. All right, we move ahead to the third quarter. It's second and nine. Man, God, I know Jackson Dart really wanted this one. Look at this ball placement, okay? I mean... I felt bad for number five in this game. 
He just kept getting torched, and I don't know if he could have done a whole lot about it. All righty, before we get to this nasty Lane Kiffin touchdown, let's do some trivia. Which Ole Miss receiver holds a record for yards in a single game? And when you come to your conclusion, it's going to be absolutely wild, okay? But first, check out Underdog Fantasy. There's higher, lowers, there's all kinds of drafts in all sports, not only just football. Sign up now using my promo code Carter for a deposit match bonus up to $100. So right now in Underdog, you could draft A.J. Brown in the first round, but he's not the answer to the trivia question. It's actually someone you could draft in the last round who I think could have a bounce back year. And his name is Jonathan Mingo. He had 247 yards versus Vanderbilt. Remember earlier, the offsides where he touched the helmet? Okay, Lane Kiffin remembers that, and he knows that you're likely going to go zero blitz when it's third and nine in the red zone. Okay, this is the exact play that New Mexico State ran versus Auburn for a touchdown where the running back actually leaks out because as a defense— You're thinking they're to keep the running back in versus zero blitz, right? Um, Because you need as many blockers as you possibly can. But versus zero, the running back oftentimes isn't accounted for um, out of the backfield. And you'll see, yes, they get home. And it doesn't matter because Quinshaw Junkins is wide open right here. And if you want to see the New Mexico State versus Auburn breakdown, it's floating in the top right corner of your screen and you get a nice touchdown right there. And then we get the two-point attempt. You got to go for two down 12 or up 12. And it's Priesthorn again, right? So you see Priesthorn. He's all the way here to the right side. He ends up getting open to the left. And they have their DT blocker in as well. If Dart wanted it, he could have even thrown this back to Begeese for an easy touchdown. Instead, he floats it all the way back here to Priesthorn and... It is money in the bank. All right, so now we get to the second and six, and this just shows you the playmaking ability of Jackson Dart. This time, everything is picked up really well, okay? And Dart, I would have loved to have seen an all-22 angle. He does bring his head down, and he looks to run. Was there something open deep? Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. But I want you to see this playmaking ability right here. Steps to the right, cuts back, to the left and eventually gets into the space. Now, these weren't defensive linemen. These were faster linebacker players he was juking, and he picks up the first down after some tough run and some good stuff. All right, third and 14, and that's offsides. It gets cut off there just a little bit. I'm a little shocked Zero didn't strip that, but still, in that situation, it was a good job getting the football out quickly. Trey Harris is probably as good as anyone on a comeback making the first guy miss. Only, I think, Malik Neighbors is better than that, and Malik is off to the NFL. Trey Harris broke a few big ones versus LSU on third down, doing this exact exact same thing on comeback routes. And you see after the catch, he's really special too. He falls forward for all that extra yardage. All right, so now we get to one of the better touchdown runs you'll see in a goal line situation. It's blocked really well. You're pulling these guys around. But look at this from Jackson Dart, okay? It, it's interesting. He, he played this like a running back, right? He presses this hole to get this linebacker to commit to this hole, and then he bounces it. You could just see a little head fake right there to get 13 to bounce, uh, cut to the inside. And then eventually he just kind of feels this out and scores, okay? Pretty much untouched. That is some really creative running from Jackson Dart and puts this game away. That's some good stuff. All right, so the big question, is Jackson Dart the best quarterback in the SEC? I'm not going to go that far, but I can make a strong argument that he has the best situation, right? Maybe outside of Quinn Ewers, who also has a case to be in the best quarterback in the SEC, that video will be floating in your face here in just a moment. I know Garrett Nussmeyer, Nico, Jalen Milrow, there's so many guys that are in consideration for that, but it would not shock me in the least if Jackson Dart is first team all SEC. He's got Trey Harris back. You know this offensive line will hopefully be better if you're an Ole Miss fan under Lane Kiffin. And look, 
you have that continuity pre uh, the priest corn i think i've been calling him priest horn in this video my apologies priest corn should be back the memphis transfer who's been really good and explosive for this old miss team and defensively you get walter nolan and a few a few other nice transfers trey amos you could be seeing Ole Miss as a college football playoff team next season, and I would put them in the playoff right now. I think they're jockeying with LSU as the number three team in the SEC going into next season. Alabama and 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 others are in that mix uh, as well. So really excited to see what's going to happen to Ole Miss, but this is going to be the big thing. Are they going to be able to survive losing Quinshawn Judkins? You guys let me know in the chat um, if you believe Judkins is a deal breaker for this Ole Miss offense. But, you know, from Jackson Dart's perspective, this guy really impressed me in this game. And, yes, there are a lot of layups that come with playing in the Lane Kiffin offense. But you saw how many throws he had to make off, you know, his back foot and how many accurate throws he was able to make down the sideline. I think the next step for him um, as a player – is pocket presence, right? There are some times where he holds a football a little too long. And another thing is just being an overall quicker processor, especially towards the middle of the field. Now, Ole Miss fans, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I feel as if the middle of the field is a weakness uh, for Dart. But look, there's a lot of quarterbacks that have started off weak over the middle. Last year, Jaden Daniels, uh, before his Heiser Trophy season, wasn't really an over the middle of the field passer. And this year, he was excellent at it. So I think Dart's just going to continue to mature and going to have a really easy schedule to get this offense going. So he could be a dark horse Heisman guy. But once again, that's why we are here for the uh, to, to, to hopefully become smarter football fans together. Now, floating in your face, some other great content that we've been talking about. It is Power Hour SEC Boom. And tonight we are doing, oh, Salmon Baby, let's go. Oh, 